continue our series, Digging a Ditch. Say it with me, dig a ditch. ditch. See, this this digging a ditch is as spiritual significance. And, And I will be quite frank with you. When we began this series, I did not have the awareness of the propheticness, propheticness? the prophetic word that this message would be, not only, not only for the series, but what is to come. And I think you'll understand that more as we end this year and enter into next year. Dig a ditch. We, we have, well, I have something I want to share with you. Several weeks ago, I shared a prophetic word. I'm not a prophet, and I, I am not a person who says the Lord said or or thus saith the Lord, unless I am convinced that God is saying. I'm not going to prophesy anything or say it's prophetic if I don't believe it is, and this is. I prophesied several, several weeks ago that the river of living water is flowing. I'm tired, as I said before, I'm tired of saying revival is coming. Revival is already here. I'm tired of saying something's going to happen. It's already happening. I'm I'm tired of looking for something in the future when I know that God is doing something today. And I declare to you the waters, the river of living water is flowing. And you say, well, pastor, I don't feel anything. Let me remind you, we'll read it in a moment, but let me remind you of what the prophet said to the three kings. You may not see, you're not going to see it, he said. You're not going to see it, you're not going to hear it, but the waters are flowing. And I'm here to tell you, Not only are they flowing, I've got another word for this prophetic word. Not only is the water flowing, but the waters are running deep. You hear me? The waters are running deep. This word that I'm going to read here in Ezekiel chapter 47, the prophet is given a a vision. And in this vision, flowing from the sanctuary, representing the presence of God. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not here to have church. I'm not here to have some religious experience. I am here because I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I am here because Jesus is here. You say, well, pastor, how do you know Jesus is here? He's here because I brought him with me. <laughs> how many of you testify you brought Jesus with you? In fact, the Bible says where any two or three are gathered together, he said, I'll own that gathering. I want you to know God owns this gathering this morning. In the prophetic word, he said that flowing from the sanctuary, flowing from the presence of God, and if God is here, his presence is here, and the waters are flowing. He said, I want you to measure this. That's kind of an interesting thought, and and this is not the message. It's just a part of the prophetic word that God is speaking to us. He said, I want you to measure this, this flow. And as he began to measure it, he, he measured it out in length, and he walked into the water, and the water was ankle deep. How many of you know you can stand in ankle deep water? You can remain in control in ankle deep water. But then the Spirit said, Go further. And he went further. He went up to his knees. And you can go to your knees and you can still maintain control. The, the, the current will have an effect upon you, the current will bend you, the current will push you. But as long as you're knee deep, you still maintain some control. But then the spirit said, go even deeper. And he went deeper up to his waist. Now you're getting in trouble. Now the current is beginning to move you. Now the current is beginning to affect your life. Now you have little power, less power against the current that is pushing against your being. But that wasn't enough. The spirit said, I want you to go deep. And here's where we read in Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 5. And he measured off another thousand But now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in. A water that no one could cross. What happens now? Now you're totally involved in the current of the river. And can I tell you, when the spirit moves, I want to be totally involved in the move of the spirit. Rivers of living water are flowing, and brother and sister, the waters are running deep. Swim out into the deep part. Swim out into the deep part, because here's what we find in verse 12. And I encourage you to read verse 1 through 12, but verse 12 says, as he came back, fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both sides of the bank. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear 
bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary, the water from the presence of God flows to them. Hear this. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. You have a need from God, get into the deep waters of God. Whatever your need is, however large your need is, get into the deep waters and you will find God's presence with you. You'll find the flow of the Spirit and can I tell you, you'll find everything you need in the waters of God. Can I tell you, the river of living water is already flowing and the waters are deep. Can you say amen? amen. We'll hear more about that in the future. 2 Kings chapter 3. Three kings got themselves in a bind, disregarded God, went against the enemy, found themselves in a desert. They had no water. They were about to die. They asked for a word from God. They got a word. Not only were they about to die, but the, but the enemy was on the mountaintop looking down in the valley. Have you ever felt the devil doing that to you? That, that, that you're in a predicament. Uh, that, that you're in a battle. You're in a fight. That, that, that you don't know what direction to go in. It, it appears, it feels, it senses as though the devil's on the mountain looking down at you and he's sneering at you. I hate it when the devil sneers. He looks as though he's just wringing in his hand saying, I'm, I'm ready, I'm gonna defeat you, I'm getting ready to take you down. Can I tell you, devil's not taking you down, devil's going down. The devil is already defeated. And so while Moab, the Moabites were up there wringing their hands just waiting for the time that, that the, the armies of God became weaker and weaker, God said, not only will you not become weak, you will become strong and you will defeat your enemy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 14. Elisha said, As God of the angel armies live and before whom I stand ready to serve, if it weren't for the respect that I have for Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I wouldn't give you the time of day. Can I tell you? You may be here this morning and you may be wondering to yourself, could God love me? Could God take time to care about me? Is there any way that I could merit? Is there any way that I could earn? Any way that I could deserve for God to love me? Or is there any possibility that God could change my life? Can I tell you something this morning? God will never turn you down. God will never turn you down. If you're in the pit of the pit of the pit, if you are so low you could sit on a dime and swing your legs, God is still there for you. God will never. You see, the prophet said, I wouldn't give you the time of day. God is always going to give you his time. He'll always be there for you. And I can tell you this, you don't even have to call out. All you have to do is acknowledge and he is there. How many of you experienced that? Say Amen. But considering, bring me a minstrel. And when the minstrel played, the power of God came upon Elisha. We've already discussed this. If you weren't here, go back, get the DVDs, CDs, or talk to somebody. What happened is the prophet realized the, the spiritual atmosphere had to change. And in worship, as you evoke the presence of God, the spiritual atmosphere changes. But verse 16, then he said, the prophet said, God's word. In other words, what he was saying is, God now is speaking. This is a prophetic word. Dig ditches all over this valley. Now remember, they had no water. They were perishing. Not only were they dying of thirst, but their animals were dying of thirst as well. Dig ditches all over this valley. And here's what will happen. You won't hear the wind. You won't see the rain. But this valley is going to fill up with water and your army and your animals will drink until they are full. Now I want you to underline this. I want you to, I want you to memorize this next phrase. This is easy for God to do. This is easy for God to do. Can I tell you, I have gone to physical therapy and I have told my physical therapist, this is easy for God to do. You want me to bend my head this way? You want me to bend my head that way? You want me to jump up and down? I'll do all of it. But I'm telling you this, my faith is in God and this is easy for him to do. They, 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 they get me on this machine. I don't even know what the name of the machine is called, but the essence of the machine is it stretches me. First time I saw the machine, I said, what is this? He said, he said I want you to get up on this table. I said, what is this? Because it looked, it looked weird. What is this? He said, well, it, it, it's going it's to uh, cause there to be space in between your vertebrae, in your neck and in your spine. I said, a what? 
He said, we're going we're gonna to stretch. He said, it'll be gentle. It'll be gentle, but, but we've got to stretch this out. So I climbed up on this machine, and they stick your chin in this thing, and then they strap this thing over your head so you can't get out. <laughs> I've been in some machines that I was looking for a way out. And I'm in this thing, and, and all of a sudden this, this motor starts, and, and you feel this gentle push against your head, so like it's pushing you, pushing you in. And then all of a sudden it turns and it gently begins to push you, push your head up, okay? Now, I am convinced that when I'm finished with this physical therapy, I'm going to be seven foot two inches tall. <laughs> but can I tell you that before I got on that table, I said to my physical therapist, God can. This is easy for my God to do. And he looked at me like, who are you? In fact, in fact, he asked me, what do you do for a living? I said, I'm a pastor. He said, you're a what? I said, I'm a minister. He said, where do you minister? I said, at the greatest church in Houston, Brazewood Assembly of God Church. He said, I know where that is. I said, then you ought to get here, you sinner. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I didn't even think that. I really did not say that. <laughs> this is easy for God to do. And he will also hand over Moab to you. In other words, God said, not only am I going to meet your need, not only am I going to give you water, enough for you and your animal strength, I'm going to give you until you drink, until you're full. But he also said, I'm going to defeat the enemy for you. Now, we'll get to this eventually, how how the Moabites came to be defeated. And, and can I tell you, one of the reasons or, or one of the um, ingredients of their defeat was the ditches. Isn't that interesting? Okay, maybe not. So we have, we have come to this. For those of you that haven't been a part, digging a ditch is a, is, is a spiritual preparation for a miracle. It is, it is believing that God has, if he had enough water for... Uh, Joram and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom, if he had enough water for them, if he could cause, if he could cause a, a deluge of water to run through a desert, a desert of salt, the valley of salt they called this, if he could have a water run through so that it would fill up the ditches and cause them to have enough water to drink their fill, don't you know that God can take care of your need too? Don't, and, and not only that, but defeat the enemy. So, so the essence of digging the ditch, spiritually speaking, is to prepare yourself for the miracle that God has for you. But to dig a ditch requires tools. Several weeks ago, we discovered the first tool. You need tools to dig a ditch to prepare for your miracle. And the first tool that we discovered was God can. Say it with me. God can. Declare it with me. God can. Every miracle is predicated upon your faith that God is able you see, if you don't believe that God can meet your need, if you don't believe that God can create your miracle, if you don't believe that God can take care of you, you're not going to do anything. In fact, if you don't believe that, I don't even know why you're here. The Bible tells us that with God, all things are possible. When we come into a battle, we can declare God can. So, I'll declare it. God can heal you. God can deliver you. God can provide for you. God can guide you. God can protect you. And God can bless you. And that's my declaration of faith. God can. And I'll make it more personal. My God can. He's my father. He cares for me. The Bible says he even knows my name. <laughs> and even more than that, even more intimate than that, he knows the very hairs on my head. He knows me. Now that's the miracle to me, is that he knows me and he still loves me. <laughs> God can. And we have to believe that. But not only do we have to believe God can, we have to believe that God will. I don't know that anybody or very many people would argue that God can, but some people are just not sure that he will, or at least he won't for me. He may for you, but he won't for me. So now we come to the, to the second tool. 
You need tools to dig your ditch to prepare for your miracle. I'm going to give you the second tool. I want you to take out a pen and piece of paper, write it down. This is a long one. It's a long one. Are you ready? First tool was God can. Second tool is I can. Say it with me. I can. Say it again. I can. I'm going I'm to give you two statements here. I want you to listen to me carefully. First of all, I can because God can. I can. What? I can do all things. We're going to come to that in a moment. But it's not just that I can. I can because God can. God is big enough to accomplish anything I need in my life. And because he is, I can. Now, typically, when we declare I, God can, when we pray in faith and we believe, what we're really asking, most of us, what we're really asking is, God, I need healing. I believe, God, you can. I want healing right now. <laughs> Isn't that the way? We believe that right now. But we've discovered there are two ways God's answers prayers. One is suddenly. That's the right now. That's the asking and receiving right now. People having been on a smoking a habit of smoking cigarettes 30 years, prayed and asked God to deliver them, and right now he delivered them, never had another cigarette the rest of their life. That's what we want. We love those, we love those now moments. We, 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 and, and when they happen, we celebrate the now moments. But there's another way God answers prayer. It came to pass. And that's nonetheless an answer to prayer, and it's nonetheless miraculous. It's just that it takes time. Now, we want what we want from God right now. I want to be healed right now. I want patience and I want it right now. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. The I can of God or the God can is powerful to give it right now. The now of God. But the I can is God answering the need through you. See, it's still the I can, it's still the God can, but it's God can through me. It's God can defeating the enemy through my life. It's God healing me. It's the I can of healing, but he heals through me. It's the God can through me ministering to your life as well. I can. Now here's the first point. We need to exercise our faith. We believe that God can. We've made a declaration this morning that I can. I can do all things. We need to exercise our faith by speaking the word of God. If you've got a need and you believe that God can and it's not happening right now, you still begin to speak the word of God in the need of your life. Not only speak the word, but pray the word of God. If you're in prayer about something that God can, it's not happening immediately. You pray God's word. Not only, not only speaking and praying, but living the word of God. Now here's the second part of it. Exercising your faith. The second part of it, and this is important. Exercise your faith and forsake your complaints. Yeah, you gotta love me. Forsake your complaints. When you complain, you give power to the enemy. When you complain, you give power to the need. I, 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 if I could right now, if I could walk up to some people and I could go, and they would no longer ever be able to utter a word of complaint, you know what would happen? I would break down their vocabulary in half. There are some people that half of their vocabulary, half of their speech is complaining. I'm talking about believers. I'm talking about believers who even confess God can. And then when it doesn't happen on their timetable, when it doesn't happen in their schedule, and doesn't happen the way they think it ought to happen, they begin to complain about it. 
I'm sick. Oh, am I sick? Oh, I'm just sick. <laughs> I'm sick. How you doing today? Oh, I'm terrible. It's the most terrible thing. Job's bad. Wife's bad. Children bad. You're just giving power to the problem. You're giving, you're giving essence, life, to the problem. I'm going to tell you something. If I got a problem, I don't want to give it life. I want to give it death. I don't want it to have a life penalty. I want it to have a death penalty. And we need to stop our complaining. You know, the most powerful words that you can speak, thus saith the Lord. When Jesus was tempted by the enemy, you know what he did? He said, it is written. It is written. Wake up in the morning, you don't feel good. It is written. By his stripes, I am healed. It, and, and one of the things is I have read through this encounter, Jesus with the enemy, what I found is the devil didn't have an argument. How could the devil argue with truth? How could the devil attack Jesus against the truth that Christ spoke? The Bible says resist the devil. Resist the devil. Can I tell you the best way to resist the devil? Speak the word of God into his face. Speak the word of God right into his face. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to see the hinder parts of the devil as he flees from you. He's got no argument against the word of God. Exercise, I can, because God can. Exercise your faith and forsake your complaints. Can I tell you what a complaining also does? Complaining gives fuel to somebody else's need. Hear me. Complaining gives fuel to somebody else's need. I wake up in the morning, maybe I don't feel good. I go to work, and I begin complaining. I don't feel good today. I don't feel good, I don't feel good, I don't feel good. And what if there's somebody sitting next to me that doesn't feel good? What have I just done? I have encouraged them not to feel good. But the opposite of that can be true as well. Is when I walk into the office and I say, God is giving me strength today. God is giving me strength. God is giving me healing. You know what I'm doing? I'm speaking words of faith into their life as well. And you know what? They may not even believe, but I have sown a seed of faith into their life. Exercise your faith and forsake your complaints. I can. Say it with me again. I can. And I can. Why? Because God can. I want you to read with me Philippians chapter 4. The key here is not that God does it for me, but that God works through me. Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in every, in any and every situation. I'm not going to ask for a response, but I want you to think about this. Is that your life? I have learned to be content in any and every situation. Can I say that? Can I say that? Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want. In verse 13, I can do everything. Some translations say, I can do all things. And here's the key word, pivotal, through. It's interesting how we focus on certain things and neglect the things that are pivotal. Everything pivots on that word, through. I can because God can. That's exactly what Paul is saying. I can because God can. I can do everything because God can do everything. I can do all things because nothing is impossible with God. I can do everything through him. I can do everything because God can, and he gives me what? Strength. I can because God can. As long as God can do it, I can do it. Hear me. As long as God can do it, I can do it. And here's that word strength. As he gives me, as the God can gives me strength. Now here's what the word strength means. Oh, let me back up. I can do everything through, and that word through means in relationship with. 
I can do anything. I can do all things because I have a relationship with God can. Because and he gives me strength. Now here's what strength means. Now, I, want to, I want to sow this into your life this morning. Here's what the I can means. I can means I have power. I means I am, I can means I am empowered. And that word empowered means you are emboldened. You are bold. Hear me. You are bold. You may say in the natural, I'm, I'm an introvert. In the natural, I'm, I'm, I'm quiet. I'm not outgoing. I'm not an ex- extrovert. But I'm telling you, in the spirit, you are bold. And we can make bold declarations. I can say, I can. Not because I have the ability. I know my weaknesses and I know my strengths. But the declaration, I can, is because I have a relationship with God can. We are bold. And in that boldness, there is no backing down. Devil cannot push you around. Hear me. The devil cannot push you around. He does not have the power to force you back. He doesn't have the power to force you to either side. The Bible tells us that through Jesus Christ, he has been defeated. I can because I am emboldened and I'm not going to turn back. In fact, devil, you come against me, I'm just going to go harder for God. You come against me and I'm going to go run for the deeper water. Emboldened. Secondly, that word strength means I can be enabled by that means I have authority I have authority can I tell you you are not weak if you've got Jesus Christ in you friend you've got all you need you are not weak there is a power and authority the Bible says that all authority on heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. And then he said, now I give you authority to go. You see, I don't walk in my name. I don't walk in the name of Brazewood. I don't walk in the name of the Assemblies of God. I don't walk in the name of some religion. I live in the name of Jesus Christ. There is the authority. There is the victory. There is the power. There is the I can. And we need to exercise that authority. We need to exercise that faith. We need to stop acting like children. We need to stop acting like 90-pound weaklings. And we need to start exercising the faith of God in our life and saying, devil, no more. Authority. You have that authority. Second, thirdly, that strength that comes from God can is a strength of increase. Can I tell you God is always about increase? Anything that God has ever taken away from me, he has always added more. And there have been times where God said, son, I want you to lay this down. I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about something, anything. Son, I want you to lay this down. I have a a desire to do something. Son, I want you to lay that down. I, I, I accomplished something. Son, I want you to lay that down. Can I tell you, every time I've laid something down in the name of Jesus, he has always added more into my life than what I laid down for him. We have that that authority. The increase. I love that about God. The increase. And that increase represents intensity. Intensity. There are some Christians in the world today that are satisfied with where they are with God. There's some Christians are satisfied with just the knowledge that I'm going to get to heaven. There's some Christians that are satisfied with just knowing a little bit about the word of God. I've said to you many times, God is not about improving your life. God is about transforming your life. Radically, supernaturally, miraculously changing your life. And this is the intensity with which he gives us the strength. It's not just power to do and accomplish and be. It is intensity. It is a desire to know God more in my life. It is giving God my all. It is is, uh, uh, selling out, forsaking all else and giving myself unto him only for the rest of my life. I believe that the I can believers 
are the most spiritually intense people in the world. Now, I'm not talking about not having joy. I'm not talking about a sad face. I'm not talking about... I'm talking about loving God with all of our heart. I'm talking about receiving all that God has. And then finally, lastly, to conclude, I can, because God can, make me strong. Now, that's obvious. What does that mean? Make me dangerous. Brothers and sisters, I am dangerous. You are dangerous. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, taking over the United States or, that's not, that's not the kind of danger I'm talking about. I'm talking about, da I am dangerous to the enemy's territory. I am dangerous to the enemy's ways. I am dangerous to the enemy's authority or the authority he thinks he has. Becoming dangerous, I am convinced and I will win. Can I tell you? A boxer that believes in him or herself is dangerous. An arm, army or a person that has a dogma that they are convinced of is dangerous. We're seeing it every day. We, we see it, we see people that are dangerous because they have a dogma of anti-Christ. They're dangerous. They don't mind killing people. They don't mind giving their life for what they believe in. And I mean literally giving their life. They're dangerous. But can I tell you, the spirit of God in you and the I can of God in you makes you more dangerous than anybody that walks on the face of this earth. The power of the Holy Spirit in you makes you dangerous. When you go on your job, you're dangerous there. Why? Because you represent the kingdom of God. When you go to school or university, you're dangerous there because you represent the kingdom of God. When you're in your neighborhood, you don't just have a roof over your head. You don't just have an apartment to live in. You don't have a bed to sleep in. You're dangerous in that neighborhood because you represent the kingdom of God. And the violent take it by force. <laughs> when we believe in the I can because God can, we become dangerous people. And I'm going to tell you something. I want the devil to squirm in his seat when I come around. Not because of who I am, but because God can in me. Dangerous. Brothers and sisters of Brazewood, we are dangerous. The water is flowing. We're digging our ditches. And we're going to receive our fill and Moab is going to fall on his face. Here's the, here's the tools. God can. Say it with me. God can. And because God can, I can. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Father, we love you. How awesome you are. We love you, Heavenly Father, because you can. I am weak, but in my weakness you have made me strong. I thank you, Father God, that as we embrace not for a Sunday, not for a day, not for a season. But as we embrace these tools to dig the ditches, the waters are flowing, Father. The time is now to dig the ditches of faith. The time is now to prepare. Father, I pray that there'll be a, 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 something that will arise within us, an urgency that will rise with us and a convincing of our spirit that when we declare God can, it's not just dogma. When we declare God can, it's not just a statement. But when we declare God can, it is a declaration of our faith in a living God. And then, Father, because God can, I can. I can do all things. I can do all things. Father, when it gets rough, I can do all things. When it gets impossible, I can do all things. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for those in the sanctuary this morning that are wondering today, can life be worth living? Wondering today, all of this talk, and I don't even know where to go. All of this talk, and I don't even know if God could love me. Father, as I said at the beginning of this message, though man may not give us a time of day, though humanity might give up on us, God, you're always there for us, and you'll never give up.